One of the popular and very first Java EE interview questions is can you explain the architecture of the last application you have worked on or can you explain the common layers and technologies you see in any Java EE application? This lecture will help you answer that question with ease. Any Java EE application can be broken down into multiple logical layers starting with the presentation layer. These layers help us organize our code logically. The presentation layer is where we use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, servlets and JSPs from the Java EE world and also the Java server faces standard to develop beautiful UIs or the presentation layer. If we want to use something from the Spring framework world, we use Spring MVC module to create the presentation layer. The presentation layer uses the services provided by the next layer or the layer below it which is the business layer or the services layer. This is where we code all our business logic for our application. We create plain Java objects and also DTOs which stand for data transfer objects to share data across our layers. We have an option of using the session beans at this layer as well instead of creating simple Java classes, we can use session beans, which is from the EJB standard of Java EE. The data access layer, as the name itself says, is the layer which is responsible for fetching the data that is required for our application as well as saving the data into data stores. We call the classes at this layer as DAOs, which stand for data access objects. We also create entities and domain objects which carry the data back and forth and we mark these entities using JPA annotations. Typically, we use JPA to perform data access. JPA stands for Java Persistence API and it is a standard from Oracle to perform or to use ORM tools. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. It makes our job as developers easy to perform database operations. Implementations of JPA standard are Hibernate, Eclipse Link, TopLink, etc. We as developers, we just master the JPA API and we'll be able to use any of those underlying ORM tools. The data access need not be database always. It could be messaging where we can use JMS. JMS stands for Java Messaging Service. It is a standard from Oracle again, which we as developers learn to interact with messaging systems which in turn allow us to access third-party applications or another application within our organization. JDBC to connect and access the database. If you are accessing external systems, we could also use web services. If the external system is exposing web services, we use JAX WS standard from Oracle if it is a SOAP-based web service and the JAX RS standard if it is a RESTful web service. Finally, to glue all these layers together, that is for one of these layers to use the other layer, we do dependency injection typically using Spring dependency injection or starting Java E version 6, we can use the inbuilt at inject annotations which makes it a lot more easier to do dependency injections. All the application servers which support Java E 6 and 7 will have support for dependency injection. We can do that without using spring as well. To summarize it, the typical layers which you see in any Java E application are presentation layer, business layer, data access layer, the integration layer provides or allows the data access layer to perform its operations and finally the data layer itself which carries the data.